Welcome. We are grateful to have you join us today on Thy Kingdom Come. Coming up later in this episode, the very Reverend Nana Apao Jechi delivers a sermon on the theme, Developing the Right Attitude as a Christian. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? But so long as a man considers his own self as the most important thing in the world, his back is turned to the kingdom. And now, up next in Methodism Today, Mrs. Matilda Emisa Atha donates to the Robert Abwaje Mental Community Library. And the Association of Methodist Men's Fellowships hold the second edition of the Kumsen, Aka and Enchia Memorial Lectures. Details are up shortly. Stay tuned. The wife of the former Vice President of Ghana, Mrs. Matilda Emisa Atha, has admonished the leaders and members of St. Peter Methodist Chapel to encourage reading among their children. She said this during a recent donation of books to the Robert Abwaja Mensah Community Library belonging to St. Peter Methodist Chapel at New Achimota, Accra. She said that Books are on the come library no so they be am kwala no so e be tuna kan kan a o mo so be nya exposure ni bi na e improve o mo bro fo e san sa kwala bi o kan de no e ma ni bro fo so kwa ni e san se o hu wa se bi e na o nya exposure so nti a kan kan de ye nti me se mo 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 kwala no na mo kan kan de da se the books donated included test books, reference books, story books, French books, and more that will serve students from nursery to junior high schools. Accompanying Mrs. Matilda Emisa Atha to do the donation was her husband, the former vice president of Ghana, His Excellency Parkwesi Emisa Atha. So this afternoon, we brought some books for the children to use, primarily because one of the things I do is to promote reading. Promote reading because reading helps children to speak well. It also exposes them to different cultures and different things. And for children who read well, they do well in other subjects. And I'm encouraging children to take reading seriously. And not see reading as a chore, but read and enjoy and read just for pleasure. Therefore, this afternoon, the books I've brought is to encourage all the children who come here. The Superintendent Minister of St. Peter, the very Reverend Emmanuel Asenso, received the items on behalf of the church and was grateful for the support by Mrs. Matilda Emisa Arthur. St. Peter Methodist Church is very grateful to Her Excellency uh, Matilda uh, for bringing us uh, these books. As we said, we, she has been supporting the work in terms of library. Even before they got into politics, I know that she was one time the responsible for the library at the uh, University of Ghana. Uh, and since this had been part of her life, when she took up this high position, she still continued to help. The, we as a St. Peter Methodist Church, as a um, we believe that we are here to serve a community and one way in which we can do this is actually through the, uh, the library uh, that they have set up uh, for years. We actually have uh, 
children coming round. Some of the school, you saw some of the uh, the children around from the schools. They actually come here to learn to read, uh, and we do get people also coming from outside. Some people who are doing some research because of the uh, the computers and so on we have. They also come to do some. Some even from some universities and higher education. So that's how we've been uh, working uh, to, to support uh, the work of the community here. The Association of Methodist Men's Fellowships has held its second edition of the Kumsen Aka and Encha Memorial Lectures at the Beneza Methodist Chapel in Bantama Kumasi. This year's Memorial Lectures focused on celebrating the late Dr. Augustus Amate Ama and Dr. Peter Clement Ewa, whose selfless contributions have built the Men's Fellowship. Last year, the maiden inaugural lecture had its focus on the visionary men who conceptualized and started the Methodist Men's Fellowship. They were the Right Reverend Thomas Wallace Kumsen, Reverend Kwao Clegg, Brother David Aka, and Brother Albert Enchia, all of blessed memory. This year's memorial lecture, the Association of Methodist Men's Fellowship celebrates the late Dr. Amate Ama, who was a founding member of the Accra Wesley Methodist Men's Fellowship and served as the first men's fellowship chairman in his society. In 1984, he was elected the first national vice chairman to lead the Connectional Men's Fellowship. During his tenure, as the national vice chairman, he set up administrative structures necessary for the smooth running of the association. Likewise, Dr. Peter Clement Ewa is a founding member of the Men's Fellowship at Ebuakwa Asinemaso and led as the first branch chairman. Presently, he is an executive member of the Kumasi Diocesan Men's Fellowship. These two men have been strong pillars to the Methodist Men's Fellowship. And in fact, on behalf of the entire Methodist Church Ghana, I present this to you with the permission of the presiding bishop. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. During the program, the presiding bishop, the Most Reverend Titus Awachi Pratt, inducted into office 11 ministers as diocesan chaplains to serve the men's fellowship in their various dioceses. Fellow workers of the Lord in his vineyard, having been duly inducted into office as the diocesan chaplain, for the Association of Methodist Men's Fellowships in your diocese, we now declare you truly and duly and officially inducted into office. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The presiding bishop admonished the newly inducted chaplains to keep to their calling and serve God effectively through their ministry. To serve the present age, my calling to fulfill. Oh, it the guest speaker, Professor Seth Opuni Esiama, delivered a lecture 
on the theme, Rekindling the Methodist Evangelical Heritage, focus on the men's ministry for church growth. To us as Methodists, evangelism means only one thing, to tell the good news of Christ to people and to draw them under the banner of Christ. But one thing that we need to remember is that there is a difference between evangelism and doing good deeds. The fact that you are doing kind things is not evangelism. Evangelism is telling the people about the message of Christ, why he came and what he came to do. When we talk of church growth, two things come into my mind. The first is winning souls for Christ. And the second is retaining the people we already have in the church. How are we winning souls for Christ in today's Methodist church? If I were wearing a hat today, I would take it off. For the students in our tertiary institutions, they are doing marvelously well. Every vacation, they go on size. They go into remote areas, areas where you, you and I will not be prepared to go, to go and win souls for Christ. These are young men and women who will leave their comfortable homes and their hostels, their beds, to go and sleep in classrooms because they want to evangelize and bring people to the Lord. Colossians 1.28 says, It is Jesus Christ that we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in wisdom. Now, when you are teaching somebody in wisdom, in Christ, you are making him a more complete human being. So the men's ministry has that duty to make men in the church more complete human beings. The church's mission that Christ gave us is a great commission. Go ye therefore into all the world and make all nations my disciples. So our job is to transform the world through our evangelism and other activities. The Methodist Church, Ghana, has set itself on a, on a trajectory that will help us to win souls for Christ because we have adopted a theme that we want to rekindle the Methodist evangelical heritage for church growth. It is a heritage that John Wesley left us, a heritage that Daniel left us, a heritage that you and I have a duty to continue. Going on, the presiding bishop, the most reverend titles, our tripart, led members present to launch a book by the association titled the Methodist Men's Fellowship, 30 Years and Beyond. And to Yanko Pondimo, and Gumay, the Pound Toma, and the Chesse, Mamma, a woman at a ceremony, one with dear and fear every son. Ah, a basinoco, ah, you need the crime, say, dear Evans, the Bayashi, and the Munu, Medene, the Wayanko Poja, or Ba, the Missus of Concord Dimo. Amen. 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 The book contains a chronology of events by the association, including the history of the Methodist Men's Fellowship, organizational structure, and all past and present connectional executives. In his remarks, the chairman for the occasion, Brother James Opong, was impressed with the success of the program and the participation of members. We say a equal to the two celebrants, the late Dr. Augustus Amate Ama and Dr. Peter Clement Ewa, and to all those who continue to toil for the growth of the Methodist Men's Fellowship. Methodist Men's Fellowship, for Christ will live.
scripture reading is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 18, the first four verses. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. And I read from the Good News Bible. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Beloved in the Lord, I'm speaking on the theme, Jesus' teachings on the right attitude. Jesus' teachings on the right attitude. According to the Matthew narrative, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? Here is a revealing question followed by a revealing answer. The disciples ask, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And from this, Jesus taught a greatest lesson unto us. He took a child and said that unless they turn and become as this little child, they will not get into the kingdom at all. The question of the disciples was, who will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And friends in Christ, the very fact that they asked this question showed that they had no idea at all what the kingdom of heaven was. And Jesus said, unless you turn. He was warning them that they were going in complete, in a very wrong direction, and away from the kingdom of heaven, and not towards it. Brethren, in life, it is all a question of what a man is aiming at. If he is aiming at the fulfillment of personal ambition, the acquisition of personal power, the enjoyment of personal prestige, the exaltation of self, he is aiming at precisely the opposite of the kingdom of heaven. For to be a citizen of the kingdom means the complete forgetting of self, the obliteration of self, the spending of self in a life which aims at service and not at power. Therefore, Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my follower, should deny himself, carry his cross, and follow me. But so long as a man considers his own self as the most important thing in the world, his back is turned to the kingdom. And if he ever wants to reach the kingdom, he must turn around and face the opposite direction. Therefore, Jesus took a little child, and here there is a tradition that the child grew up to become Ignatius of Antioch, who in later days became a servant of the church, a great writer, and finally a mitre for Christ. Ignatius was surnamed Theophorus, which means God carried. And the tradition grew up that he had received the name because Jesus carried him on his name. It's a tradition in a way. It may be so. Maybe it is more likely that it was Peter who asked the question and that it was Peter's little boy whom Jesus took and sat in the midst because we know that Peter was married according to Matthew 8, 14, 1 Corinthians 9, 5. So Jesus said that in a child, we see the characteristics which will mark the man for the kingdom. There are many lovely characteristics in a child. The power to wonder. And you know the children are very inquisitive and they marvel and wonder at how things work and how things goes on. Then there is the power to forgive 
and forget. The power of the child to forgive and forget. Even when as adults, as parents, we offend them, they forgive us and they forget about it. But unfortunately, some of us even as adults are very vindictive. We hardly forget. We hardly forgive, but not so with a child. There are some couples, there are some men, there are some women who have not forgiven their spouses. Yet, we are Christians. There are some parents, they have not forgiven their children because of one wrong or the other they did. There are some children, they have not forgiven their parents because of one or two things they have done. And when we, even we, have, we are in authority and we have power, we really also really punishes those that are under us, our subordinates. But Jesus, by using this child, coming out of a great characteristic, a quality, to forgive and forget. And this is where I want us also to know that we must be in a situation where if we want to go to heaven or to be seen as a greatest who is likely to be in heaven, then we must forgive and we must forget. So there are three things that Richard Glover says about this. And the first and foremost, there is the quality which is the keynote of the whole passage, the child's humility. A child does not wish to put himself forward. Rather, he wishes to fade into the background. He does not wish for prominence. He would rather be in obscurity. It is only as he grows up and begins to be initiated into a competitive world with his fierce struggle and scramble for prizes and for first places that this instinctive humility is left behind. But as Christians, with this at the background that Jesus is giving out the qualities and characteristics that must be seen in the candidate of heaven, we must be very humble in all that we do. Hallelujah. The second point is, there is the child's dependence. To the child, a state of dependence is perfectly natural. The child never thinks that he can face life by himself. He is perfectly content to be utterly dependent on those who love him and care for him. If men will accept the fact of their dependence on God, a new strength and a new peace will enter our lives. Amen. The third characteristic, there is the child's trust. The child is instinctively dependent, and just as instinctively, he trusts his parents that his needs will be met. And this statement finds expression in the fact that when we are children, we cannot buy our own food, we cannot buy our own clothes, or maintain our own home. Yet we never doubt that we will be clothed and fed and that there will be shelter and warmth and comfort waiting for us when we come home. When we are children, we set out on a journey with no means of paying the fare and with no idea of how to get to our journey's end. And yet, it never enters our head to doubt that our parents will bring us safely home. The child's humility, beloved in the Lord, is the pattern of the Christian's behavior to his fellow men. And the child's dependence and trust are the pattern of the Christian's attitude towards God, the Father of all. My dear brethren, when we allow godly humility to clothe us, it offers control over our attitude, outlook, and actions, showing that we have nothing to prove but everything to offer. This is our challenge. And by grace, we have been called into the kingdom business. And my prayer is that the Lord himself will grant us the grace and the strength to be able to exhibit the right attitude, which will bring honor and glory to God. May God help us all. Amen.
watching this week's episode of Thy Kingdom Come. This program was brought to you by the Methodist Church Ghana. For your prayers and counseling, call us on the numbers currently showing on your screen. You can write to us via the address showing on your screen or email info at methodistchurch.org.gh. You can also visit our website www.methodistchurch.org.gh We entreat you to subscribe to the Wesley channel on YouTube for more updates on our programs. God bless you.